Check out some tasty recipes from our Cook Smart Eat Smart program. table. Today we are continuing on with our healthy swaps of things that maybe we enjoy eating typically, but since it's January, we're trying to kind of rethink our, our food choices. This is a, a healthier alternative. So today we are making a meatloaf. Now a lot of times when we consume meatloaf or we make a meatloaf, it has very few vegetables and it's also typically loaded with sugar. So something like ketchup is added to it. Um, and you don't typically have tons of veggies in there. So today, this is one from our Cook Smart, Eat Smart cookbook. Um, actually, both recipes we're doing today are from our Cook Smart, Eat Smart cookbook. And it's a really great program that we have here at the Extension office. We have been doing it virtually um, since the pandemic hit. So we will be continuing to offer that virtually if you are ever interested. Um, we are likely gonna have a class available in February. So stay tuned for that if you want to join our workshops. So to start with our meatloaf, we have an extra lean ground beef. Um, you'll also see notes in the recipe that say that you can use something like ground turkey if you prefer to use that over ground beef. But this is the 93% lean. It's actually on sale at the grocery store this week, which is a win. Um, but I try to get the leanest ground beef that I can just to reduce that saturated fat content. So um, the American Heart Association, the American Dietary Guidelines, Dietary Guidelines for Americans was just released for 2020 to I believe 2025. And they did inc include beef as a healthy option as long as it is a lean beef. So we really don't want to eliminate um, meats unless maybe you have it for religious reasons or personal reasons, but beef is absolutely a healthy option for you as long as we're choosing those leaner cuts. So we're gonna dive right in. We've got our extra lean beef here, and then we are gonna add some breadcrumbs, and we need half a cup of breadcrumbs. And I can rarely find the whole grain breadcrumbs in the grocery store. Uh, which is, that's okay if you can't find those, you can use what you can find and try to get your whole grains in elsewhere. And then we also need one egg. And very simple ingredients. There's not a whole, whole lot going on, um, going into this. And then we also need salsa. So we are doing um, one and a half cups total of salsa. So we're using salsa instead of something like ketchup. So we're still getting similar flavor, um, the kind of tomato based flavor in there, but salsa has lots of fresh veggies in there. Um, this one has tomatoes, jalapeno peppers, um, onions, dehydrated onions, and some garlic flavoring. So you are getting some veggies in by adding your salsa over choosing something like ketchup. So we're just gonna do three quarters of a cup of salsa. And then we're gonna do top it um, with more salsa when we're done. And then our last thing is just minced onion. So this is about a quarter of a cup of onion. Um, I just used, I was using a little food processor. This is leftover from before. So you could absolutely just use um, leftover onion. You could chop some up if you want to by hand, or you could use some type of food processor to help with that. Whatever is easiest for you. All right, and then you just add a little bit of salt and pepper. So the recipe just says a pinch of pepper and I believe it calls for a half a teaspoon of salt. And then we're just gonna mix it. I'm gonna get my hands in there in just a minute, but 
just mix it all together. This will make five mini loaves. So this is really great for um, just a different variety of your meatloaf. So you, you can make this in just a big pan like you would traditional meatloaf, but when you do that, it takes about an hour to cook versus when you make it in the little bitty meatloafs, it takes only about 20 minutes. So it really cuts down that cooking time just by having smaller portions. And that absolutely helps with um, speeding things up. If y'all have seen any of my other shows, you know I am not big into spending all this time in the kitchen. I do it for my job, so when I get home, I don't wanna spend a, a ton of time um, cooking at home either. So a lot of my recipes I try to keep short and sweet that don't have a lot of ingredients or a lot of steps. All right, so this is looking pretty well mixed together. We'll see you guys back in just a second and we'll get these formed up into our five mini meatloafs and get them in the oven. Whether you're returning from a family vacation, coming back from college, or even returning from serving our country, we know there's no place like home. And here at Performance Forward, we wanna make sure you get there. That's why every Performance Certified Vehicle comes with the Performance Lifetime Powertrain Warranty. Performance Forward, welcome home. Introducing the Star Communications app. All the tools you need in one convenient location. You can access Watch TV everywhere. Check local channel lineup. Check your Star email. View and pay your Star bill. Report troubles. Use your Star security app. Check your home voicemail. Sign up for CrowdFiber. Check your Wi-Fi speed. The list keeps going and going. Download for free from the App Store or Google Play. All right, so we've got our um, mixture, our meatloaf mixture here, and you can see some nice little pops of the green pepper that's in the jalapeno that's in there. So now we're just gonna make it into our meatloafs. Now remember, um, this makes five, so that you don't want them to be real big, but you're gonna form them into, you could do balls or you could just do, um, I'm gonna do little, little, um, ball chunks there. You can make them more like a loaf if you want to. Whatever works best for you. So again, we'll get five of these. And these actually, by using that leaner beef, um, we're getting a good amount of protein with a low amount of fat in this. So in the cookbooks, it does have the nutrition facts for uh, all the recipes that are in the cookbook. So you do get a cookbook when you join our Cook Smart Eat Smart program. Um, that comes with the workshop. And some of that is sponsored through our partner United Way, who um, we get a grant with them every year and they help us with some of that program cost. So it doesn't cost anything for you to join that class. You just have to uh, submit the evaluation, which is the key to getting all the good stuff. So once we get these formed, we're gonna to top them with just a little bit of salsa. So you think about your traditional meatloaf and you usually top it with ketchup. Um, again, you know, similar concept here. We're just using salsa in place of that, which doesn't have that, uh, that sugar added to it, making, and it does have lots of vegetables in your salsa. So I'm just trying to spread these out so they're even. That way they will all cook, you know, more evenly. And this is, you know, a pretty big chunk. So you're getting a good amount of food in these, in these meatloafs as well um, for your meal. So I'm gonna spread it with salsa and we've got three quarters of a cup of salsa here. Now this is just what I had in the fridge here at the extension office. It is a, a mixture of the salsa we just had and a black bean corn salsa. So if you see the beans, that's kind of where that came from. 
can use whatever you have on hand. I'm all about using what we've got, making what we have on hand work. So those look real good. Um, and they're gonna bake, like I said, for about 20 minutes. Just trying to make sure these are all even. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna throw these in the oven, wash my hands real quick, and we'll see you at our, uh, our soup section. All right, so we have our meatloaf in the oven. I've got my hands all clean. Um, that way we can avoid cross-contamination. We talk about that some in our programs with our food safety. So you wanna make sure that you're having a safe, clean kitchen um, while you're preparing your foods. So the next thing we're making, this isn't really a um, healthy swap, but just thought it would be good. And it's another recipe from our Cook Smart, Eat Smart cookbook. Um, but if you're short on time, this recipe, since I started an extension over five years ago, um, I have heard about this recipe as a top favorite of everyone's. So it's called 15 minute soup. Um, there is no meat in it, but it is a really healthy, tasty recipe that you can make at home. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna go ahead and start on my onion. So you just need one small onion. And if you guys have seen the show before, you know my little onion technique. I cut off that end and then I like to cut it in half and then slowly work my way in those grooves. And that way, when you chop it the other direction, you've got nice little diced pieces already done. I like to also turn it again and then work my way to get closer to that root end. And you can discard, if you wanted to, you can run your knife back through and do the rest of that. Um, chop it even more finely. It depends on what your recipe calls. This one calls for us to have diced, um, well chopped, chopped onion, which is not quite as fine as diced onion. But a lot of that's personal preference. If you want really big chunks of onion in there, or if you want it to be more finely chopped. And once you get it a little bit more flat, you can do that rocking motion. All right, now I'm just gonna run my knife through it one more time. And we discuss all about knife skills in our Cook Smart, Eat Smart class. So we really show you um, the difference in the different types of knives, how to use those, um, and the different types of cuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in our soup pot and then we'll see you guys back in just one second. Getting a new car or truck doesn't have to be difficult or expensive. Just let Performance Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram swap keys with you. Bring in your current vehicle, we'll swap keys and get you into a new car with the Performance Peace of Mind Lifetime Powertrain Warranty for the same or less than you're paying now. We've got a lot full of vehicles to choose from and there's never been a better time to shop than to start something new sales event. It's about performance and performance is taking care of you. Many things have been stolen away during this time of uncertainty. No crowds to cheer on their favorite teams. Applause and pageantry have been stripped away. Thieves are looking to make your home empty and silent. Star Communications has the answer you are looking for. Security by Star. Automation and affordability along with friendly service makes for a security choice that is sure to keep your family cheering. So we've got our pot on. I do have it on about medium heat. And I did put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom. The recipe doesn't call for that, but I am going to saute these onions just a little bit. And that helps to bring out the flavor and really flavor your soup or you know whatever you're making. Anytime you're using 
what we call aromatics, which is gonna be your onion, your garlic, your herbs. You always want to kind of season your oil, season that in the pot first, and then that will help to kind of spread that flavor around through the rest of the dish. Again, your recipe doesn't say that, but this is just from experience, this is how I like to make my soup um, or anything that I'm cooking, really. Just spread that around a little bit. I'm also going to go ahead and add our garlic salt. So um, this recipe does call for garlic salt or regular salt. It's only half a teaspoon, not much salt at all that you are adding. I love garlic, so I'm going to use the garlic salt because it'll give a, a little bit of a garlic flavor. So just eyeballing about half a teaspoon here. And again, doing this so it will help to flavor the onions, flavor the dish, um, to spread that flavor around a little bit further. Okay, the next thing that we are going to add is everything else. So we've got um, some low sodium chicken broth. I could not find the no sodium, um, so we just went with the, the low sodium. Still a great option. It's best to choose low to no sodium broth if you can find it. So, um, you know, whichever one is available to you. We also have diced um, tomatoes. This is no salt added tomatoes. I aim to find no salt added anytime I'm shopping for canned foods. Um, the diced tomatoes are pretty easy to find the no salt added, but these are undrained. So you're just gonna take the lid off and you're not gonna drain them. You're gonna put all of that liquid into your pot. This is why this recipe is so easy. It's not a ton of prep work. The only thing I really had to do was chop my onion. Now we have some great northern beans. Again, I could not find the low sodium um, or no sodium option of the beans. A good t trick for this is if you can't find the no salt added, um, then you can absolutely do uh, rinse it out in, the, in a colander. But you wanna rinse your beans anyway, so you rinse it really well, and that will remove about 30% of the sodium that is in whatever you're rinsing. And the beans can serve as our protein in this dish. So we've got a lot of veggies, um, but then beans are a great source of protein. They also have a ton of fiber. So in half a cup of Great Northern beans, you get 21% of your daily fiber. And we always say if you are consuming 20% or more, if you see that daily value says 20% or above, that means that food is high in that nutrient. So for beans, they are very high in fiber. They're a great choice. Um, they actually fit into our carb food group and into our um, vegetable food group. Sorry, not carb, our protein food group and our vegetable food group. So they check a few boxes off when we are looking at our my plate. All right, so we are going to bring this to a boil and then we just add in our um, spinach. We have some chopped frozen spinach. This is a 10 ounce container, so um, you could absolutely use fresh, but this is nice and easy. Again, this is if you are stretched for time, you don't wanna spend a lot of time in the kitchen, you don't really wanna to go to the store. Um, hopefully you have some type of beans at home and you have some diced tomatoes and an onion, chicken broth, throw it all together. Very simple, very easy. So a lot of times this is a recipe that could be kind of your, your backup if you are ever um, you know, tight on time or you haven't had a chance to go to the grocery store. So we're working on getting that to a boil. Um, I did wanna show you, this is our Cook Smart, Eat Smart cookbook that I have been mentioning. So it's really great. It's got a lot of different um, information, so meat buying tips. Um, using a crock pot, how to do that. It isn't, this is an older cookbook, so, you know, nowadays we see instant pots and air fryers and all of that stuff. This is focused on, you know, crock pots, um, but it does have your kitchen essentials. It's got getting your family to the table, so including that family dynamic. And then you dive into all kinds of recipes that are included. So um, this is a really 
well-balanced cookbook. It's not just for cooking. Um, it's also just for eating in general, for living, for shopping, all of that stuff. So hopefully you can make it to one of our programs. So we're gonna wait on this to get to a boil. We'll see you guys back when it's ready and we'll have it done. Sweetie, will you turn that down please? Keep life exciting, even when it's not. Watch TV everywhere from Star Communications. After completing my contract, I still have to buy out of it? Come on, here's your sign. Switch to the sign that's keeping home secure and customers happy all over the area. Security from Star Communications. We pride ourselves on fair pricing and quick, friendly service every time. Somebody try to break into this place? Security from Star Communications. All right, so our soup is definitely to a boil now. So we are gonna throw in the spinach. Let's see if I can do this safely. And that is frozen, but it, you know, obviously our pot is to a boil. So give it just a minute and it will um, begin to break up in the pan. And then we are gonna be adding some, let me turn this back up, turn it down just a little cause it was getting crazy. Um, we are gonna add some macaroni. Now, ideally you would use whole grain macaroni, but as I said, this is a recipe that we're stressed for time. We didn't get to the grocery store. You know, this is a last minute decision. We're just trying to get food on the table. This is just what I had on hand here at the extension office. So. Um, this is just your traditional elbow macaroni. Um, I typically at my house, I have that whole grain macaroni, but remember that at least half of your grains need to be whole. So if you can't always make whole grain choices, that's perfectly okay. Try to find other ways to fit in that whole grain throughout your diet, your day, um, your week. So just slowly work that into your diet. Um, so this is regular macaroni, but it will be perfectly okay. So still just trying to break up that spinach a little bit. You can see the beautiful color. It's got the, the red, the green. Um, you can see the onions in there. It just looks really yummy and tasty. And this would still be a really great recipe to add ground beef to, ground turkey, um, you know, whatever you choose, or you could just make this one of your meatless meals or serve it like we are with the meatloaf. So we have our meatloaf and then we have our soup as our veggie side. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in our macaroni. And that's gonna cook for six to eight minutes. And that's just half a cup of macaroni, so we're not using a ton, but it just gives it enough um, of that, gives it some of that texture that you want with, you know, your carbs, your, your pastas. You want a little bit of that pasta in there um, to give it a little different texture and flavor added. So we're gonna let that cook for about six minutes. Meanwhile, our meatloaf is done. It is time. So we're gonna walk over here and take that out of the oven. Um, now with any of your ground beef, you wanna make sure that it is cooked to 160 degrees. So I have not temp checked this yet, but the best way to know if something is done is by using that digital thermometer. You hear me talk about it all the time probably sick of it by now, but it is truly the best way to know if something's done, um, especially when you're dealing with something like ground meat. Um, think about a steak. So our steaks, we can actually cook to um, 145, so, or sorry, 150, 145, 150. Um, 
So you don't actually have to cook, cook that to quite as high of a temperature as your ground meats. But you think about with a steak, with the whole muscle meat, um, the outside is what's being exposed to bacteria versus the inside. When you take a ground meat, you're grinding up the whole muscle with the other muscle, so um, with the outside. So all of it is getting contaminated. You need to make sure that it's cooked thoroughly to 160 degrees so that it's safe. So we're just gonna take this, put it in the thickest part of our meat loaf, and it's climbing. We'll see if it can get up to 160. I have a feeling it's gonna need a few more minutes. So the recipe called for 20 minutes. I'm feeling it might need 25 to 30 minutes. Yeah, so we're at 123. Again, on the outside, it looks perfectly done. If I were to cut into that, it would probably be a little bit red, um, but that is the best way to know if your food is cooked to the proper temperature. So I'm gonna throw this back in the oven. We'll get our soup finished and we'll show you guys what that looks like. Hope this was helpful to you and we will see you guys back next time.